very good morning to uh, one and all ma'am has already introduced uh, that i have been working in the area of distributed generation and uh, the topic that i have picked up today is inertia response from renewable energy sources or distributed energy sources inertia is a very important term <clears throat> and very important factor for the secure and reliable uh, operation of a power system and particularly when we expect that renewables share is getting increased that in that there is a threat to the inertia so it has become very important that renewable energy sources they also contribute towards the inertia of the system otherwise system can co collapse any time and uh, we can observe frequent blackouts so how do we make uh, our renewable resources and dgs to contribute towards the inertia of the system that is what is the talk of the day let's you know begin that we go to the background and then we'll come back to this this is what is the scenario in india at present and why i'm telling this 15% at present out of the total generation that we have it is going to increase and uh, this increase is uh, going to be very significant and it may be quite possible that uh, you know by the year 2025 or 30 it can be you know one fourth of the total generation and uh, we are well aware that these sources they are intermittent in nature they are stochastic in nature and uh, we cannot uh, rely upon them and if this is the amount of share that they have then it can be a problem for the secure and stable operation of the power system and particularly if you see among uh, these renewables the wind and solar they are the major major share and they are highly intermittent however if you see in uh, dgs hydro is a very reliable one small hydro but its capacity is small still it is being explored and mostly it is uh, you know in hilly area hilly areas only and then we have biogas and all uh, other uh, resources they are also being uh, increased but major share is from the wind and solar which are highly inter intermittent that is why this inertial response from these sources have become very very important this is what is the scenario and that is what why we are going for uh, you know this uh, more of the generation we have enough you know of the coal but because of the mm, you know restrictions on the emission it has become mandatory for us that we go for the higher of the uh, higher renewable energy sources the per capita consumption in india is very very low as compared to the world average it is 2200 kilowatt and if you see the developed countries they are having very high per capita consumption so being you know, if you want to be a developed country we also need to we should be energy sufficient that is why we are you know striving hard to achieve the target of generation from conventional as well as from the renewable sources particularly renewable because we want to have a sustainable solution for our energy problems there are driving factors you know we must have heard about the kyoto kyoto protocol then copenhagen summit or the recently the paris summit now we have we are also signatory to that and uh, we are going for you know emission cut there is you know by 2020 there is uh, you know 2020 20 that we need to increase generation of renewables by 20% reduce consumption by 20% so this is how the policies are being made and uh, after some time certain emission allowances will be allocated and you cannot go beyond that so only solution left with us is to increase the renewable energy sources emission trading schemes are also there there will be the opportunity for uh, renewable energy sources particularly independent power producers that they start uh, you know participating in trading schemes and ultimately earn revenues this is the biggest revolution that we have in india electricity act 2003 it's a big uh, you know uh, document but it has brought major changes in the power system operation few policies which i have listed out renewable purchase obligation rpo you must have heard this is what is uh, you know a condition on each and every state that they need to generate 
power from the renewable energy sources, particularly wind and solar, out of their total generation. And if they do not do that, they need to purchase it from any of the power producers which are generating from the renewable energy sources. So these are the policies being made, which is enforcing that more of the renewable energy sources should come and uh, they should be uh, used. Feed-in tariff, this tariff, particularly for uh, you know solar and wind, it is being provided, higher tariff is being provided so that uh, you know they get their investment cost and it is they are you know assured that they are going to get this return for the quite uh, considerable amount of time so that they are many of the investors they come forward then we have renewable energy certificates this is uh, again a very important uh, uh, factor here these certificates are issued by some competent authority and it is given to certain power producers which have a generation of up to one megawatt and as a result of that if any of the state who is not able to generate they have meet their rpo means their obligation of 10 percent or 20 percent of renewable energy sources generation they can purchase these uh, renewable energy uh, you know from those power producers which are having these renewable energy certificates so these sort of uh, options are being provided for the independent power producers which are you know encouraging the investment in renewable energy sources then generation is also made license free so it is made open so uh, you can have your own uh, pv panel at your home and uh, you can also have a small wind turbine so you do not to have any uh, you know license for that that is what is the major you know driving factors which have led to the growth of renewable energy sources in india now we got an area, the topic that is the inertia. In before moving to this, we need to understand that how our system operates. In our system, we operate the total generation. It should be able to meet the load and the losses. And in case there is any you know, change in any of the load, what happens initially? If you see that uh, frequency which is 50 hertz, if load increases, frequency will go down. Why frequency goes down? Frequency, frequency goes down because the kinetic energy, rotor speed goes down. Rotor and speed is directly linked with the frequency. So frequency is going down and uh, the kinetic energy which is stored in the rotor, it is being released to supply that additional amount of electrical energy which is needed and which was there because of the load change. So what happens, the, the load change is, you know, we can say it's a small signal uh, stability issue or small signal, but there are, uh, you know, incidents like fault and uh, there can be outage of any line, outage of a generator, <laughs> where there can be, you know, large amount of power variations. Under those conditions, how different generators should respond? See, if you see our conventional generators, what we are saying, grid connected with small renewable energy sources, it has sufficient energy from conventional sources. Why? Because we have thermal, we have uh, hydro, and uh, they are rotating, they have kinetic energy stored. If load is less, obviously they will have higher kinetic energy stored and they can you know, release it as and when needed. Similarly, if there is higher load is increased as a result of that kinetic energy is released speed slow down okay frequency varies but any load amount of change if you have sufficient amount of generation so it is able to meet any load change okay without a uh, major change in the frequency yes the response of these sources are slow if you talk about the thermal like to start generation we, we do have spinning reserve but still it needs some time to take up the generation like we need to open the you know, valve the steam has to be increased and generation will start so it and the response that we need from our sources is in you know starting from a few seconds like three four five seconds then 30 seconds and minutes time so we have primary reserves secondary reserve and tertiary reserves which are you know time dependent whereas in conventional sources they are no doubt able to supply it but the time taken by them is slightly large 
so they have sufficient energy here and if there is uh, small renewable resources why i am taking small renewable resources is because i told you renewable uh, res uh, renewable resources are intermittent in nature if there is let us suppose lesser amount of wind which we are expecting it is not available or load also changes simultaneously so impact is double sometimes it also complements like uh, you have uh, more of generation of renewable resources and load also reduces so they are complementing each other sometimes both of them uh, you know are in one direction some sometimes they complement each other but the problem is that conventional sources are slow in response and in case we have significant amount of renewable uh, interconnected then it becomes a problem why it becomes a problem for example if we talk about a wind which we are uh, uh, discussing in wind we have mostly induction generators which are used and induction generator itself needs you no know, reactive power to work and in case there is and uh, wind power i will discuss that it works on a certain certain you know uh, speed range only and in case that speed is you know beyond that limits cut out cut in and cut out limit then we need to cut it you know stop the operation of the wind wind power the supply which was coming from the wind power is now not no longer available and the load we need to cut down or maybe we need to supply some other generation now when we need to start it again again what happens that this wind generator it will require power so from where it will get the power it will draw power from the existing sources only so if it draws power from the existing source it means it is acting as a load to that so if the amount is small so it is not going to be a big load so whatever is the energy available with the conventional it is able to meet it but if you see the second one if there is the large amount of renewable resources it may have it may have if renewable energy sources are properly coordinated so that that, that means that we will discuss later it may or may not have if amount is very large sometime we need to go for you know load shedding and then we uh, start generation and there has been uh, you know certain documented uh, you know methods now that how to start under these situations like if you have to go for the black black start when we have the you know blackout in india how to uh, restart the system so there is a proper documented uh, you know uh, uh, procedure for that that this is a generator need to be started first this is what is the second so this is how they are connecting and we are able to uh, come up with this uh, uh, you know black start capability then third condition where we are it is isolated or a microgrid condition and in microgrid we expect major shear is from the renewables like wind it can be from you know maybe a gas plant uh, if it is available there or uh, the solar mostly uh sometimes fuel cell and all these things they are being used to uh you know operate this microgrid or small isolated grid and there is hardly any you know uh, a system which is rotating in nature just like your synchronous generator it becomes a problem there that in case there is a load change who will take care of that what to do in those conditions and particularly when we have large amount of photovoltaic cell so we we will focus on the two one is wind and second is uh, the photovoltaic in wind we expect because it's rotating in nature wind also has a rotor it means uh, it is going to decrease or increase speed depending upon the load change so it can contribute to inertia by its inherent nature but what about photo photovoltaic it doesn't have any inertia as such but when we are targeting the you know capacity of generation it is going to be very very large so what in those conditions if there is no solar all of a sudden we never know that how this though we have the prediction techniques but solar uh, energy may be available it may not be available and if major share of the uh, this uh, photovoltaic is uh, yeah, power is not available then how our system is going to operate and if there is a load change any fault occurs under those conditions again again it becomes a you know severe effect so that is why there are research going on that how to make use of these photovoltaic system as well as uh, you know the wind energy to support the energy of the system it has become a very very important issue and particularly in microgrid areas smart grid areas uh, this 
virtual inertia term which i will discuss now it has come up now that we need to have inertia which is virtually available it's not actually rotating which we say but it is virtually available it can be provided that is what is the major area and uh, there are many latest paper which have uh, coming and there are lots of scope in this now this is the term this virtual inertia of photovoltaic let's focus on the photovoltaic first how to what is the, uh, this is what is the basic you know smart uh, supply demand imbalances it changes the frequency that's quite obvious even if there is a photovoltaic and the total system inertia see we can calculate in equivalent values how much power is there by solar power so if you calculate that this delta p is the power contributed by solar it depends upon this h is the inertia equivalent inertia of the synchronous generators it's calculated in that way f is your uh, uh, you know uh, the frequency and rate of change of frequency so it is going to decide the, this is the amount of power that is there uh, because of the imbalance how much if this is the delta p is the imbalance it uh, this is how is the inertia uh, of the system in photovoltaic system and inertia in a power system comes from sg means synchronous generator and this is how we calculate it how do you calculate the inertia this w divided by the this rating so w is the kinetic energy stored how much is the kinetic energy stored there is no kinetic energy in photovoltaic that is what we need to understand but we can calculate the equivalent value of the kinetic energy which is stored there and ssg is the mv rating or we can call it as the generating rating rating capacity now how do it emulate that is what is important inertia emulation is realized by controlling the charging and discharging of dc link capacitors if you see uh, this uh, i don't know this this capacitor here this is a dc link capacitor and adjusting the photovoltaic generation when it is feasible or necessary so it means it is the stored uh, capacitor its charging and discharging rate need to be controlled at the same time we also control the generation of your photovoltaic that can also be done this is how it is going to emulate the inertia you know we simply take that uh, if there is a load change frequency goes down if frequency goes down it means the increased load who is going to supply the energy that is being supplied by your you know the decrease in kinetic energy fine so ultimately it is supplying your active power to that basically it is the supply of the active power maybe by decreasing the kinetic energy but it is essential to decrease the kinetic energy because it needs the active power only so if are if we are able to supply the active power by effectively controlling our solar panels it is equivalent to that it is equivalent to that that is what is the uh, virtual inertia that the moment because it is automatic it is inherent in case of your uh, rotating machines that is going to decrease the speed because increases the load and that decrease in uh, speed is basically going to supply the active power additional active power so the same active power can be supplied from the renewables also. it is being you know tried it is being uh, studied researched that the moment the same kind of behavior should be there from the renewable uh, for photovoltaic also we should make use of photovoltaic panels a photovoltaic system to supply the active power in a similar way as is being supplied by a conventional generator or maybe by a wind generator so that is what we call as virtual inertia it means the inertia is not available as such what we say but yes it can supply that so that is what uh, you know that we can control its charging and discharging rate using this, this of these capacitors and adjusting the photovoltaic generation also it, the two you know simultaneously uh, actions that is being done now to emulate the inertia of synchronous generator the virtual inertia coefficient of a photovoltaic can be calculated like this see h is equal to if you see the previous equation same kinetic energy to by rating so equivalent value we have taken of here as h means equivalent inertia from the photovoltaic hpv means equivalent inertia from the photovoltaic this one is the kinetic energy stored in that and its rating of the plant whatever you have the photovoltaic plant okay then 
the frequency dynamics of photovoltaic system during the inertia emulsion with how what are the frequency changes when it is responding to that uh, change in load yeah it is acting as a uh, inertia contributor this is how we can have delta power change similar to that delta b h by f that we have 2 h by f we generally have total uh, h is the total uh, you know inertia of all the system so here also we have h photovoltaic now equivalent value of the inertia that we expect from the photovoltaic okay frequency and rate of change of frequency this is how we model it we are going to model it basically that if there is a equivalent change of power from the renewables uh, particularly photovoltaic what is the inertia contribution of that so this is how this modeling is done and we are going to supply this data p the change in power and that that change in active uh, this uh, active power generation of photovoltaic for the inertia emulsion so what i am trying to tell you time and again is that it's a very simple concept that we need to make photovoltaic panels a photovoltaic system to supply the active power the moment there is any change if it is going to if there is a load increase it need to generate uh, supply additional power maybe by uh, you know capacitor charging discharging or by increasing the generation from the uh, your Uh, photovoltaic but how can you increase the generation from your photovoltaic it is not dependent upon you know you can you don't have that so what is done there is that you keep some backup if you have you know 10 kilowatt plant so you use 9 kilowatt only you keep 1 kilowatt spare again a sort of reserve that in case there is a load increase you start generation you, you connect it immediately there are ways to connect we have power electronic technologies available nowadays so we are making use because it it is the need of the hour because if the share is going to increase it is going to uh, it has to be there otherwise system cannot work now there is some mechanism so i will not go into depth because it, it needs some modeling and all these things but yes the power is the initial power that you have and delta change whatever you need how much power you need that uh, a photovoltaic system need to be applied updated generation setting so it keeps on giving that continuous uh, you know data and accordingly it can set what i told you that if you want 1 kilowatt additional generation so we already have kept that we cannot start generation uh, increase from photovoltaic all of a sudden it's not a thermal or hydro units but you can keep some something in balance obviously it's a loss no problem but we need to uh, you know keep it for the system security purpose a stable system of operation if there is a decrease in generation then it is easier because we can use it for storing purpose so what is important here is it is important is that we need to have a very effective control the algorithms that we need to have, they need to be intelligent enough so that they decide that they can able to take the decision depending upon the change in your system and particularly it can be again small signal or large signal disturbances that you need to model and accordingly uh study so inertia emulation implemented this is the way it is implemented the delta change in power is through dc capacitor link and photovoltaic panel so what i mean to say is that this is what you need to keep in mind and if you are interested so you can search it uh, uh, slightly that the contribution for the photovoltaic is from the two uh, sources one is the capacitor which is there used okay for storing purpose it can you know the charge and discharge and second is the photovoltaic arrays generation itself you increase or decrease it what i told you already and uh, this is how it can supply that additional amount of power that is needed to meet any load change in the system this is one model there is a data papers uh, i can share it so this is what if you see the simple system we have photovoltaic array this is again boost converter then your link capacitor then dc to ac converter it is connected to a grid so what is being done if you see this here what i told you that it is the this capacitor and the photovoltaic we need to develop this algorithm the small you know uh, modeling that you need to do in uh, simulink and you can control this delta p change which if you want to you know check your control the generation from the photovoltaic also so this is how we can get it here at this point and we add it at this point and ultimately it is going to be supplied and al along with that we can also use uh, this dc link capacitor this is how 
we can make use of photovoltaic panel to supply the uh, additional amount of active power which we call as the virtual inertia okay so these are control strategies so there are lots of paper available but this is the basic concept uh, which i wanted to tell you now what about the wind <coughs> wind is also having large shear and it is increasing it is scattered also that is why we call it distributed generation and if again if large amount of you know it uh, generate uh, you know shear is there it is going to you know decommit what we say is conventional generation if total generation is of 100 megawatt and 30 megawatt is from the wind which i told you earlier also so if 30 megawatt all of a sudden goes off it becomes a problem to start them it again becomes a problem so we are using various dfig double fed induction generators and many other uh, uh, you know types of generators scigs and psmsm we can use any any one but again the change in frequency can be given by this is how it is related the power change the inertia in case of your wind the same problem in that case also but yes it does have a inertia wind unit it has it has a inertia means it is rotating in nature it can decrease its generation so how does it respond this is the basic i will not go into depth that uh, this is the power area velocity and all these things this you must have already uh, gone through so we can generate this uh, amount of power fine and uh, <clears throat> this also must be known to you batch limit that we are not able to have you heard about this batch limit but those those you are not studied but we expect if if you see this particular relationship on power equation so if you see the velocity is having some value so it doesn't mean that we are going to get the that much amount of power we get power up to 58.3% only you can have this uh, uh, look on this equation where we are putting up these values and we know that total amount of power which is there if we have this velocity of 10 meter per second we expect it to be 2.4 kilowatt but it is not actually 2.4 kilowatt it is only uh, close to 1.4 kilowatt okay so means complete velocity of that it is not being utilized it is not it is never utilized basically because of the nature of the blades of uh, the wind turbine so this limit is that it is the maximum amount of power that it, practical limit we can say the bad bad limit so when we are calculating these things have to be kept in mind that total amount, what is the rated uh, capacity of your wind plant this is the curve which i was telling you because it is important that we have this is the curve on which it, is, it operates those who have studied they know it well that we have generally it start from 3 meter per second to generally we have 15 meter per second where it can operate when unit, units can operate and if the speed is less than that obviously it is not operated if it goes above this rated velocity up to this cut out we keep it constant the power remains constant and beyond this speed of you know 30 meter per second we again shut it down because it becomes you know danger for your blades and all but if you see this uh, this cow this is the operating cow speed can vary from this to end how do we control it because it is directly linked with the frequency so how do we ensure it so we have to slightly go into the you know the system wind system and this is how you know we uh, we will talk about this pitch control later i will come back to this this uh, dip speed and cp which is fixed in such a way that we maximize the power out of this we have two turbines in wind horizontal axis and vertical axis okay both have their different you know advantages and disadvantages particularly if you see the vertical axis horizontal axis wind turbines they are generally used for the higher wind speeds we prefer it for the higher wind speeds and uh, it is connected to a hub rotational speed will depend upon the blade geometry now what we have we have a gear mechanism the generators 
so it is able to control it. it it controls it based on this gear mechanism and all if speed is less or speed is higher so it controls within that range it is able to control it so there are some you know control uh, available inside this which need to be studied but this gearbox this can control its speed to certain extent between cutting and uh, rated speed <coughs> vertical axis though it is used for the lower wind speed trip generally however mostly it is the high horizontal axis which is preferred but for lower wind speed this is also there there is number of new you know uh, type of uh, design which are coming up now the material being used there are lightweight materials it also need to be seen because uh, uh, you know over the year it's uh, there are some sort of fibric material which are coming up lightweight fibric material which are coming up which is able to uh, operate at a very low speed also so but these two design vertical and horizontal axis they particularly preferred for higher and lower speed and they are on their own advantage and disadvantages now how do we connect it that is what is important if you talk about isolated system a particular generator if you see a high induction generator operating at a particular you know speed how can we make it to work as a generator how do we, when when does it work as a generator in case it operates above synchronous speed it should be the frequency we can calculate and if we need to make it rotate above synchronous speed so there are different mechanism being used in isolated system for example if we have a four pole induction machine and uh, if we if it operates at 1200 1400 rpm then also it can work as a generator because the frequency is less so it can work as a generator but in grid connected frequency is 50 hertz so it need to be operated at that particular speed only so what you need to understand here is that when we connect it directly to the grid then the frequency and the voltage pass is taken care by the grid only it is going to inject the amount of current in that it is not going to control the frequency part in that frequency is being controlled by the grid itself so different topologies are being used for that purpose sometimes it is being controlled by the gear mechanism if it is an isolated system separately but if it is directly connected to the grid like we have different inverters being used current mode inverters we have voltage mode inverters in current mode inverters what how, how does it operate it is not going to regulate your voltage and frequency because ultimately it is an inverter being used that is connect to a system so they do not control your voltage and frequency there it just like the injection of the current it is acting just like a conductor injected to that if we say it's a voltage source in water there they regulate the voltage fine right? so like if we see this directly connected simplest one we it requires such a like we need to see that doesn't work as a motor okay and it draws reactive power okay and uh, there is no reactive power control this is the uh, different topology is being used this is double fed induction generator we have you know injection for rotor side the advantage with this is that in case there is you know lesser amount of speed so it can get it it, it can feed it back maintain that uh, you know uh, speed in such a way that it works as a generator that it is being fed from the both side stator as well as from the rotor side and we if you see this uh, portion here so rotor is connected to this uh, you know is to dc and dc to ac converter again we have a gear, gear mechanism the advantage with this i told you that because of this uh, additional amount of because what how how is tor uh, torque is produced obviously is the amount of flux that, that is available there so how do you control it you are going to control it through inverters so you are going to feed it to the rotor we inject if you see the rotor speed control method 
you must have heard about the root you know uh, ef injection in the router so what do you do there we going to inject certain amount of emf that can be in phase it can be out of phase its magnitude can be decided and accordingly speed can be controlled but how do we inject that again through inverters so here the inverters has to play that kind of role that it needs to balance that amount of uh, uh, you know power and accordingly which emf which is being injected whether it is in phase with your rotor emf or it is out of phase of that rotor emf and accordingly it balances that so that type of technology methodology can be adopted here and it has the advantage with that then this is another topology so particularly this dfig psmsm and cig they are being used nowadays means one is directly connected to the grid second can be isolated okay and there are different ways through which it is being converted what is important is that whether it is in current mode or in voltage mode which is controlling the voltage and frequency that is what you need to uh, study and understand and according these are some models and there are models available nowadays for this uh, simulation purpose <coughs> again this is again we are uh, we are directly connecting it to the grid Sir, it uh, the last and this one. which one yeah this one and uh, next slide next one i yeah. uh, see if you see this here we this is doubly fed you can see one supply is the router uh, router is being fed okay from the main grid and stator is also there it is connected to that and if you see here next one there is no connection to the router okay mm -hmm. directly connected to the grid only so it means rotor emf how how rotor emf is rotor rotor is rotating okay rotor is rotating means the emf induced in the rotor will depend upon that because frequency in rotor will depend upon sf so s is basically dependent upon the rotor speed and in case the speed is directly regulated by the wind speed only so whatever is there we it is going to be connected to the grid here in this case but here we can regulate that if speed is not less what you can do whatever supply we have we can inject some amount of current in that we go to inject that and we can control that speed that is what is the advantage with doubly fed induction engine doubly fed ka matlab ye hai got it so we can, we have a slightly better control in this case as compared to the these topologies so generally if you see the present scenario it is uh, these are the topologies which are being used nowadays because we need to have effective control yes in case i told you in uh, uh, isolated system maybe uh, in island or somewhere where it is not connected to the grid then there should there is no problem even if it goes down to frequency you can maintain that and still it works as a generator but for when it is connected to the grid then we need to ensure that it also need to have uh, a uh, proper control and motoring operation should not take place okay otherwise it start working as a load this is what is this is how it is connected if you see this uh, the perfect diagram the wind speed you can have we have a control we can control this rotor side converter grid side converter i need to see whether it is to be supplied to the grid or it, it has to take from the uh, you know grid and ultimately it is going to supply to the rotor through slip rings and control its speed okay so it is injecting that so it, the injection is possible and as a result of that it is very effective okay now this is how they go uh, dfig stator is normally connected to the grid and rotor is supplied by frequency converter that is what i have already told you and this is how is the relationship that uh, depending on the direction of the supply frequency this machine can operate over and under synchronous speed okay this small relationship that uh, you can go through the uh, papers there are some papers available but what is the important point is that d5 uh, and psmsm these, these are being used nowadays uh, mostly when uh, we say uh, you know the grid uh, there are uh, hybrid system migrate systems which are coming up these are the energies the change in energy depending upon that it can be supplied by this 
ठीक है दिस डीएफआईजी व्हेन स्पीड दिस सम रिलेशनशिप दैट हाउ मच इज द काइनेटिक एनर्जी रिलीज्ड द चेंज इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द दिस एनर्जी ऑफ दीस टू नो वेरिएबल स्पीड व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस केस इज इट इज अ वेरिएबल स्पीड dfig is basically variable speed the focus is on dfig particularly that there are fixed speeds and variable speed fixed speed that you cannot do not have any control here we have the control and here in fixed speed turbines they are prevented to supply their maximum available power in normal situations they will supply whatever they have with, with but with variable speed turbines extracting the kinetic energy in mechanical system of the wind turbine is easier with modern power electronic devices we can operate it at in a particular point where it extract the maximum power that is what is the advantage with the variable speed both of them can work but if you want to make it because their speed is varying continuously and if i want to make it operate at maximum power we want that maximum power should be extracted so it is possible quite possible with the help of this variable wind spin okay whereas in fixed speed it may not be possible so it is going to supply but may not be maximum power all the time okay that is the advantage with this variable wind speed now how do we use again what do we do we have inertial control because inertia was the main topic power is law and there are some other methods also now inertial control in this case it, it has two ways two different methods to supply it okay again we need to go slightly in mathematics you know for this that uh, first it uh, supply this inertial uh, it you know uh, uses this inertial response and other uses the droop characteristics droop droop characteristics <coughs> you must have seen they are uh, studied in case of generators when we see the load frequency control ठीक है दैट द पावर एंड स्पीड रिलेशनशिप दैट हाउ मच इट इज सप्लाइंग इफ यू द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट कंट्रोल इट मेक्स द विंड टरबाइन टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्टरबेंसेस दिस कंट्रोल इनिशियल कंट्रोल व्हाट इट डज इट रिस्पॉन्ड टू फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्टरबेंस एंड द अमाउंट ऑफ पावर सप्लाइड बाय द विंड टरबाइन इज प्रोपोर्शनल टू द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी बिकॉज़ फ्रीक्वेंसी इज चेंजिंग कंटीन्यूअसली इफ इट इज अ स्टेप चेंज it can adjust its power to that but load change is continuous in nature so it is the rate of change of frequency also that also need to be considered got it means load change is not you know it's changing at this one one minute and after five minutes changing no it's continuous so we need to see that if it is significant so it also takes into account the derivative of the frequency the frequency ki sense change ho rahi hai that also need to be considered while can designing a control mechanism in case of second control strategy which is based on droop the amount of power supplied by the wind turbine is proportional to the difference between the measured and nominal frequency aapka what is the nominal frequency and what is the actual frequency of the system which is operating if there is a difference it will adjust it accordingly theek okay? hai and do that but again it is not taking a derivative it is momentum you know uh responding at one point of time and then waiting for another one this is how reference we set these are the coefficients rate of change of frequency and the frequency kitna aapka frequency hai this is how it responds so wind unit inertial control loop it sends an additional active power to variable speed wind turbine and active power reference p reference is quickly and it changes to or active power so what i mean to say is that in case of this inertial response an additional reference power is set based on this relationship which is considering the rate of change of frequency again i am emphasizing on this that there can be load change frequency changes frequency changes it stabilizes that is one condition the another condition is that there is change then further change further change and frequency keeps on changing it is not going to be stabilized immediately and it is happening if you see your northern region load dispatch center website and they monitor the frequency so frequency is continuously changing it cannot be maintained 50 all the time because load and all these things are variable in nature so that is why it is important that 
in certain control mechanism we also consider the rate of change of frequency also while designing the reference power and this is how this inertial control schematic works okay so we have the, uh, ultimately what it is doing it is again supplying it to the rotor side converters some signals are being supplied so that uh, through that only it is going to supply the power when from the wind what we are doing we are again supplying through the converters only so we do have this power angle curve okay reference frequency we have system frequency and we use some, uh, you know some uh, filters and these coefficients which i told you already and we set reference power reference power which is based on rate of change of frequency aap isko you can use, use it without this also but if you consider it so it is going to be more precise and more effective control because frequency changing continuously and then we generate it compare it with this what's the actual power being generated what is what's the reference power and it compare it and accordingly give signal to the rotor side converters yes now you need to fire increase or decrease this is we are talking about the dfigs you set a reference power you have the actual power and the reference power is being set in such a way that it is considering the rate of change of frequency also and if there is a difference so the difference is conveyed to the rotor side converter controller and it will fire that in what converter in such a way that it is going to inject the current to the rotor by certain amount so that it starts uh, supplying that amount of power so that which is equal to the reference power now limitation of this control this is there is a limitation of these controls also that it masks the load change and delays the response of conversion generators this is what we will uh, i will show you some results also which we have taken up now what happens if we compare a wind generator and a conversion generator i told you that the response the reserve the frequency control primary frequency control secondary frequency control primary frequency control we say it's 0 to 10 seconds Scandry maybe thirty and up to a minute. So what happens? These wind units are very fast to respond as compared to conventional generators. This is what is the advantage with this also. That the more there is a load change, wind unit will act fast. Immediately they will decrease their speed. But they cannot supply power for long. That is what is the limitation with that. But if they take up that you know load change the conventional generator they observe or they feel that there is no load change at all why because it is been taken up by the wind but wind is taking momentarily only it is not going to supply it for long that is what you need to understand it no doubt responds immediately it is faster as because the conventional units need to start generation maybe increase uh, heat input and all these things so it takes it but after some time it surrenders and if conversion generator has a feeling and it gives it gets a signal that there is no load change then it again becomes a problem for that so it need to be coordinated this is what is a challenge it's a challenge area research still the virtual inertia concept this is the area that is still being worked out and their polytronics people have a major role to play in that that the moment wind power i will show you the results it you know increases the generation by decreasing the speed and simultaneously after some time that power generation will decrease wind is not going to supply it for long the moment that decrease in generation starts taking place in wind a signal should you know go to conventional generator also ki yes you need to start generation now because ultimately it is the responsibility of that generator only to take up that one okay so that communication has to be there between the wind unit which has, which is decreasing because of its inherent nature and the conventional thermal unit which need to take up the generation finally so that communication has to be there so we are talking about only i have not taken the photovoltaic right now that is again going to be a uh, another point so we have photovoltaic at one point wind another uh, second and then we have conventional units like your thermal and hydro so the limitation is that if it is not 
properly controlled or uh, we can say there is no proper communication so it masks the load changes matlab ye it is not going to make uh, your conversion unit feel that there is any load change but ultimately it, after some time it will come to know automatically because wind cannot supply it for long so second is that uh, the wind persistence uh, being limited power reserve cannot be granted for the short term this is what i already written so it is not going to supply it for long and does not investigate the limitations of variable speed wind turbines like current and voltage rating of the converter so this is what i told you that it's a challenge for power electronics people that they need to it's a huge area of research that is coming up in power electronics area that how to design these converters and inverters with the existing system that we are coming up the second is the power reserve control we can keep some power reserves what i told you in that virtual inertia also that increase generation from solar it cannot be increase all of a sudden yes we can but we can keep some reserve here also we can keep some reserve can you keep some reserve from the wind also photovoltaic is fine whatever even generation you store it you keep it because that is already there you just need to connect it but what about in wind how can you control it pitch angle pitch angle control is most of you uh, you must have heard and if you are not heard so this is very simple to understand that you just need to change the wing direction and you expose it higher or lesser depending upon the direction change but it uh, again it has some limitation it cannot go you know beyond a limit so again within that range of uh, cut in and uh, rated speed it can operate but yes you can still control it then we operate wind turbine at increased speed this is also again a possibility because how can you operate at increased speed you already have a rotor dfig is there operate at higher speed if you are operating some of the wind turbine higher speed what does that mean if there is a load change what it will do that increase speed which you are you have fixed for that it is going to release that kinetic energy to supply the load but again how much is the increase speed that is also you need to see because wind turbine can always operate at a higher speed then only it works as a generator so you can keep it slightly higher but again there need to be is not you can keep it uh, you know very high but yes you can keep it higher and as and when needed it is going to supply it this is how you can control so this i already have discussed pitch control this is or is the curve optimum for optimum power generation this is what you know i can control it how do i control it by dfig we have i have told you but what we do is we do not generate the power full power we keep some power reserve you need to keep it because in see inertia well, when i say inertia in response in renewable because we know it is highly intermittent so we cannot always what it, if you are operating at the optimum power what does that mean it means that generation it, it is uh, a message ki this is the generation available accordingly load is being supplied but if you supply 95% only and you have the option to increase it to 100% so 5% is available to you as and when there is need you can increase it so that is what is the strategy being adopted it, let's not use it at the optimum value keep it reserve so there is and you know this smart grid has made it possible now that we can do it we can control individual we can control uh, different uh, uh, you know photovoltaic or maybe uh, these units the power change that active power curve what is what should be the speed and accordingly how much power is being delivered that curve you can see that amount of power which is being supplied in the these curves and uh, we can find out that what is the change in power that is needed depending upon the speed how what is the uh, rated power actual power what is the change extreme power that we can have and where we can operate it the purpose is to keep some power in reserve and operate it at a slightly maybe on higher speed or uh, uh, you know on this curve slightly generating uh, lesser power than the optimum power 
then communication i told you it is very important that a message between different units should be given so that they do not take it uh, that there is no change at all that is uh, one area that is coming up now storage is becoming a very important area of research particularly we are having now uh, batteries lithium ion batteries are, are coming up they already are there but and uh, in addition to that we have super capacitors available fly wheels are there fuel cell so many devices are coming up and they are fast to respond and particularly in if we see the isolated area microgrid they are sufficient storage they may contribute a significant part so they can supply the reserve or change in power whereas if you see the uh, you know larger uh, grid so they may not be significant now we have now different combinations like we have batteries batteries can be started instantaneously you just need a firing circuit and uh, on a fraction of a second if, through controller you can start generation you can supply active power through inverters can we supply reactive power through inverters photovoltaic can can it provide reactive power that is what you need to think that i will discuss it later so focus on reactive power first so what i mean to say is that now you have batteries you have wind you have hydro you have thermal different factor 6 they all have different factor 6 if you see the batteries through inverters you can fire it instantaneously in fraction of a second so it is the first uh, you know you can say the component to respond to any load change then comes the wind slightly slower than the batteries they need to be uh, you know again regulated and after wind it is hydro which can act and hydro then thermal so all these units they all are responding to the load change battery can supply for quite long amount of time wind is for smaller amount of time only wind cannot supply for long but it is faster as compared to thermal so the area which is there that you need to coordinate the operation of all these batteries means batteries plus photovoltaic cell ab usko leke chalo then you have your wind unit and then you have your conventional units how do you make use of them for uh, you know supplying active power and they should be because they have different time of operation and they should be coordinated they need to be they should be communication proper communication that now it is uh, going to uh, supply this much only let next should take over so that strategy need to be devised for the inertial response or oh, this is what uh, we already have discussed that in dfig what we have now there is slight difference that reference power which we have is we take into account the reduction of frequency as well as this one that is called as your speed function is also taken into account so a model has been developed this is what i have done in my one of my papers so what we do is that we measure the frequency through this measurement we have a reference in this power here then we, i have used this these controllers this is energy of your wind and uh, this uh, uh, you know these are the power that i can control using your pi controllers here and i supply it and ultimately this is the power generated from nc means non conventional sources so this is a one one uh, dfig linearized model dfi derived model which is taking into account the frequency change continuously rate of change of frequency also and we are in a, uh, are uh, in a position to you know get the change in the power from the dfig based on the frequency as well as the frequency change okay so this reference power can be obtained delta pf can be obtained from here this is simple system if some of you who are studying power system we have a single area a single generating system what do we have what do you call this governor 
this is governor top theek hai first order function then we have this turbine and this is generator load plus generator theek hai and here we have the load change del p d is load change this is a model load frequency control model normally those who have studied power system they understand it and this is your non conventional sources this is how we are injecting it we will connect it here the power of dfig the model that i have made so what i did is a total amount of power if you see delta pg power generated from the conventional unit power generated from the non conventional unit because both of them are supporting the inertia delta pi p12 is your thailand power which is from the other area and del pd is your load change and this is your del, del pm how much is the power change this is how you can calculate because this is all the powers are being calculated the generators are contributing to increase the speed whereas load is opposite so there is a you know balance between the controlling and uh, uh, driving torques uh, between the two these are some equations this is how we uh, you know calculate the inertia contribution based on the power generated normal swing equation you must have studied so from there we can find it out and we can find the wind generation shear if there is a 100 megawatt if 30 megawatt is yeah 20 megawatt is of uh, wind so 20 by 100 is 1/5 so that is what we can find 20% wind shear so we can calculate this h can be decided in such a way that i am increasing the generation so this is one model that i have taken up there are number of uh, you know addition that we have done now we are considered uh, restructured more power market nowadays if you study this this is one area system and this is another area the two area system that we have in load frequency control normally these simple regulators what is important is this dfigs these two dfigs so i have connected these dfigs in two areas separately just to see that how do they respond theek okay? hai in conventional unit there is single generator only but i also have one dfig now we have worked the research is presently the students are working where they have included the photovoltaic batteries along with that not only for two area system multi area system also along with that we have considered the restructured power system where demand side participants are also taking place they are also contributing towards this and this is a simple model that we have these are your uh, generators and we optimize these parameters this is what uh, like i told you that we are these uh, they are pi uh, controller which are we are using so we can optimize like this i integral square error technique which you are used or there are some other techniques available nowadays we are uh, using we can use pso and g ga just to find the gain of your p and i i think in latest version you can directly get it optimized okay so what the purpose is that we devise a function where we want to minimize this frequency of area 1 frequency deviation of area 2 and tail end power uh, which is there this frequency deviation here because we don't want any frequency deviation i need to uh, minimize this and based on that i can find so what i am doing is i am changing these wind units you know uh, proportional values gain values and i plot them keeping one value constant varying another then keeping second value constant varying the second first one this is how you get these values and, and you can find the optimum value of the these gains this is how the response comes that is what we need to understand if you see these two frequency curves this it is blue color it shows when there is no dfig in second case when there dfig you can see the peak it goes down and it settles faster so what i mean to say is that the disturbance is in area 1 here that in case there is a wind wind will respond fast wind will respond fast means the frequency deviation will die out faster as compared to the system where there is no wind unit now if you have battery it may be slightly better than this 
ठीक है नॉ दिस टाइल लाइन हाउ द पावर इज यू नो वेरिंग बिटवीन दीज टू दिस टाइल लाइन पावर दैट वी कैलकुलेटेड this is the area control error again you can find the you know improvement with that when unit because it is responding to the load change and it is settling time peak time it is smaller this is the contribution of the two units if you see conventional units the system that i showed you what what is there there are two units conventional units area 1 area 2 and then we have two dfigs both areas now if you see this this uh, area one this 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 curve this blue one is pg1 mean generation of unit one without dfig and this is the generation of the second unit with dfig and when we could at dfig you can see it is this is 0.03 here here it is not approaching 0.02 only so it means the generation of the conventional generators has decreased in initial intervals when there was a wind unit why because wind unit is ready to respond it has inertia so i told you again how to uh, you know it will respond but it is not going to supply it for long now how it, how can you see it if you see this the generation of this unit is no doubt lesser because this is the conventional unit generation is lesser but if you see this is going to increase after some time here you can see it is 0.02 point let it set as 0.02 why it is point it is why it is increasing it is going to increase because ultimately this unit has to take it up wind unit cannot supply this for long but yes it can support it in initial intro intervals and it complements uh, the conventional units because they are slow to respond that's why it becomes very important that we combine these generation make a hybrid system and make use of them effectively with effective control that they respond to uh, each other and uh, they overcome the each other the limitations also there some regulations we can control these are values the regulator we which we have good control which we say and we can see the speed change the decrease in rotor speed of wind unit 1 decrease in rotor speed of wind unit 2 speed are decreasing obviously there is a load change it decreases now if you regulate if you use the regulate uh, you know their the group control so it is different in different you know, for different values now we considered load voltage at different intervals pehle we initially we picked up and after 20 second we again introduced the change the load change is step change only it is not continuous change that is what i am telling it is important that rate of change of frequency also need to be considered continuous load change we are changing at different intervals only it need to respond to those changes and here in both the cases it is going to respond so it means when there is a dfig it not only supplies that active power reduces the peak as well as reduces the settling time also that is what is important we should make use of the wind unit and we have the control mechanism and polytronics uh, is uh, you know uh, developing and effective controllers can be designed and we can make use of these you know batteries what i told you batteries plus photovoltaic very fast to respond then the wind units slightly uh, faster than uh, conventional and then ultimately conventional unit need to take it up theek okay? hai and what is important in this case is that if we include the restructured power system where we have the load you know the site uh, participation also then again it becomes a very complex problem but very interesting also to solve the shear it was also important to tell i told you i give i, I give you a relationship out of total power how do you decide it you can find the inertia contribution from the wind h value you can fix up in that particular 
model and 5% wind penetration 10% 20% and you can increase it up to certain extent and how the frequency is going to obviously you can see that more and more of this uh, contribution division goes down why it goes down because they are going to contribute they are going to respond in the initial intervals that is what we can see here right same for the area number 2 for all these again the contribution of the different generators i told you in initial generation which was there higher it is not no longer there there is no peak but ultimately if you see it is increasing continuously why it is increasing because these generators need to take it up wind cannot supply for long that is what we need to understand here these are some of the values that we have obtained just for your information you can we can share it for different values overshoot undershoots and uh, what are the values optimum values that we have uh, you can say tuned using integral square error technique so i want to conclude here that we can have a discussion because i think it's almost uh, five minutes left that it is very important that we make use of uh, our renewable energy sources to contribute towards our inertia because photovoltaic as such does not have any inertia and they need to supply it and we can make use of this okay we already, already have discussed about that how can we make photovoltaic unit to respond to inertia similarly wind also but they have different characteristics they need to be coordinated so for coordination we need communication and effective or uh, polytonic uh, converters for that purpose and if we do that i think even if we have you know 20 30 and 40% of penetration of renewable energy sources we will be in a position to uh, you know sustain our uh, you know power system under you know advanced uh, conditions or uh, high load load changes also so that is what i wanted to tell uh, in this lecture and if you have any queries you are most welcome to ask me